his issue is not a one-off cognitive test. His issue is is that he's super old. He is an obvious decline from when he ran in 2020 and from when he served as vice president. And no, I mean, no test is going to reverse what we've seen. The reason he's having so much trouble with all this is because he spent his entire career getting used to his own largely fabricated personal narrative being successfully covered up. This is disorienting for him. This is the first time in his life that his personal narrative is not being covered up, either by Democrats or by media looking the other way. This is the first time we've seen on full display the truth, the truth of Joe Biden. They have. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Wayne Dupree. It is our Friday or Thursday, Thursday, um, July 11th, 2024. And I need to... Okay, so we are live. Let me introduce the Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here on our lovely Friday. And we also have Mr. Jason Robinson of Muslim Soda. What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Top of the morning, everybody. I don't know about you guys, but I love when Democrats eat themselves. It's been so long since we've seen it. I'm I'm just enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> um, it's educational, that's for sure. Biden's supposed to have a press conference after th- uh, tonight. Today's his big boy press conference. I think it's after the NATO summit. I got to check the schedule. That's you, right. want see, you want to see if the new drugs work? Is that what it is? This he's gonna a make a big. He's gonna make a big deal about it being in the evening, and he's gonna take questions. And of course, you know he'll have the picture of the people to call on and what his statements were. Oh yeah. Okay, if you want to do it, do it. I mean, this is a battle. It's it's fun to watch this. If you think about it this way, this is a battle between Barack Obama speaking for the intelligence community and the Biden team. You can see both sides. I mean, there, there's, it's not going to be fun. I mean, for them, it's not going to be fun for me. I can't wait. Right. But like one guy said, I should have invested in, in Jiffy Pop. Because <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, Obama's the guy. First of all, I was researching this for a while. Clooney is dumb. He's yes. not a very smart guy. And he's Barack Obama's best friend. Mm-hmm. They vacation together, those families and everything. And if you look back at, at Obama's history over the years, it was always connected with like the Bushes and, and the different things. Uh, uh, Barack they Obama's m- mother's husband. Yeah, and, and, different th- and uh, I think they're using Obama. Notice how many celebrities are coming out against against Biden right now. And so you, you can follow that and see these people. They well, love this guy. Is- that's Hollywood for you too. So I mean, CAA. Um, every election cycle, especially on this point, because um, toward toward the election, you, you usually do have. <laughs> there's usually a video that comes out with about sixteen or seventeen of them, and they're reading off of a script. So they're yep. each person is saying a word, is saying a word, is saying a word, and. You have to vote. Yeah, vote, 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 vote. Just remember one word. Programming. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and here's what's awesome. This is the first time in as long as I can remember politically, five years, maybe 10 years, you'd get one or two Democrats that would speak out that magically they were getting investigated or something. But they didn't get out of line. And then everybody got out of line saying, Joe's got to go. And then after about five days, they got the politicians back in line and said, no, 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 this is our narrative. We're riding with Joe. 
But then, like Hutch said, you can see the intelligence community divide because Hollywood, Nancy Pelosi, we played it yesterday, she wouldn't say, like, I endorse Joe Biden. And this is the first time that you've seen this large of a fracture exactly. publicly. And uh, how many members of the 51 intelligence supervisors have come out against Biden? I mean, for Biden. Right. None of them. None. Well, and now, I mean, that lead clip, that was a great clip. And we've talked about this before, <laughs> but Joe Biden has been a really unimpressive politician his entire career. And he has been a liar. I mean, take out the this iteration of Joe Biden the last four years. Yep. Go back 10 years. He was the biggest liar. He made up stories. He had to drop out of the presidential election twice for integrity issues. Not that he wasn't polling good. And the media, and the media caught him out on it. Right. The media, the media tanked him both times. They were like. And, oh, and just for the record, he, he wasn't pulling very well. In the right. one, no. in the one yeah. to two percent range, both times. Yeah, he was low. Well, yeah, yeah, he, he was wasn't well. pulling great, but I mean, it's not like he said, "Oh, I'm dropping out because I'm pulling no. bad," like Kamala did. He he was forced to resign. Like, hey, here's plagiarism accusations, or hey, you're lying. So he's got to pull the plug on his campaign. He was, I mean, it's remarkable. He's one of the least impressive politicians of our lifetime. Trailer park if, trash. If, um, anyone, if you look back, because I was there, I remember the I media, think- the media and intelligence community installed Bill Clinton. Yep. That's what that was all about. Nobody had a chance in that primary. Right. Wait. That was the second you mean, one. You mean Reagan? No, Clinton and Reagan. He went twice. I don't know about Reagan, but I remember he didn't him. Go against, he didn't go against Clinton. Sure he did. I think he did. No, that was early. That I mean, that was early 80s. Clinton was 90s. Well, he ran once in the 80s and once in the 90s. I can't remember who his opponents were. Yeah, Phil Biden. I, I, yeah, I got to check. Got to check that. I want to make sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Did Biden run? We're all on the Google. I know. 1988. 1988 was one. Yep. But that, but that wasn't uh, 1988 <laughs> uh, collapsed in three months. Oh, yeah. He didn't even go against Clinton. It was Jerry Brown, Paul Sauls, yeah. Harkin, yep. and Bob Carey. My bad. Yeah. I, 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 come on now. I, you know what? Hey, I can you know, I remember that because the TVs look different back then. <laughs> uh, because I used to watch TV all the time, and it looked like the TV tube was slanted sideways and kind of squished down fat fat but when clinton got up there clinton looked clinton looked good yeah, he looked fresh yeah 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 he looked he looked good uh yeah he 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 got beat both times boy i mean gee you would think and he he would get up there and say those speeches and the media were like hey we we didn't heard that before no well actually he plagiarized material um, written material, didn't he? Yeah, it wasn't just speeches. It was like right. s- something in the law or something. I don't, he he I, plagiarized the speech from from England, I think, from an English yeah. politician or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> a couple of days ago, a couple of days ago, we were talking about Anna Paulina trying to arrest Merrick Garland, and we're like, yeah, okay. Well, just a few minutes ago, and I'm not laughing at her because actually this is the second time that this has happened because she tried to do something else before and she didn't have the votes and Scalise knew that she didn't have the votes and it failed. And I got mad because I was like, you knew that she didn't have the votes and you let her bring it on um, on the floor and you knew she didn't have the votes. Come, come to find out, let's see, 12.04, right after we started the show, um, her attempt to have the House Sergeant at Arms arrest Merrick Garland or alternatively find him ten thousand dollars per day fail ah. when when brought to the floor for a vote two ten to two o four. Twelve people no vote. 
on the Republican side, seven people no vote on the Democrat side. Um, 206 Democrats voted no. 204 Republicans voted yes. Four Republicans voted no. <laughs> They're doing this time after time. They did it in the Senate, too, the other day. Yep. The- yeah. They Wait. allowed a radical freaking judge to get a lifetime appointment. She's a, a, a assault weapons ban person. She's terrible. And eight Republicans didn't show up for the vote, so she won. Man, she that's a, for life. Yeah. Listen to the list. Ted Cruz, John Haven, Mark Wayne Mullen, Rand Paul, James Risch, Mitt Romney, Marco Rubio, and Rick Scott all missed the vote, and the lady's in for the rest of her life. You would think, and they're getting paid six figures. I said, yeah. I getting paid six figures to skip a vote. You can't even make a vote. I was going to say, I'd have to look it up, but don't they work like in session, like 120 days a year or something? It's terrible. It's pathetic. Right. It is. It is. C- can you imagine if the, Amer- if the regular American people worked 120 days a year and made $170,000, $180,000 a year? where we would be you know i mean even even when they leave dc they don't go home and work really take true they go home yeah. and yeah fundraise yeah right for the most part that's which means that they get paid day. more yeah <laughs> you know they've so, long since lost the idea that they work for us that's way gone i mean I, that's what you're seeing with joe biden too joe biden's sitting up there he feels as entitled as fidel castro he thinks he's yeah, supposed so, to stay there and die of old age, not retire. So check this out. I just Googled it because I was curious. The Senate is in session an average of 165 days a year. And the House is 147 days a year. So that is less than 13 days in session a month. 13 days. So on a four-week month, that's three days a week you got to show up to vote. And you can't do that. The Senate is how many days a year? A year? Uh, it. They say the average. I just pulled up an article. 165 days a year is the average. And they this work, article was a couple years ago, so I assume it's fairly close. They work more than the House because the House has to get reelected every two years. They got to fundraise more. Right. But yeah, think of that for the Senate. You're elected to a six-year term, and, and you work. In in session, so that's your job, you know. Like if you're a baseball player, you do a lot of stuff. But game day, you know, is is when you got to be there. So the days when they they really need to show up at work. And if you're a California senator, you pretend that you live in California, but you don't. Right. Yeah. yeah. What's you have that an called? address in California. What's that called? Uh, they got to believe me. I took civics civics class, but that was like forty years ago. Um, uh, where, man, there's a term for that when you don't live in a place, but, and it's not gerrymandering. Um, anybody in the chat room know what the word is? Uh, you don't live in a specific place, but you can run in that specific place. Lauren Bobert is doing it right now. Um, there's a lot of them. They'll set up an address in the area they want to serve. I can't remember the official term. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, Biden is supposed to be getting in front of the camera tonight, and um, tonight, and <laughs> uh, the media is going to be all over it, and they're really going to go after him uh, with the with the bill uh, with the Obama thing that you were just um, just talking about. Morning, Joe had something to say about. It. Right. But, but, you know, George Clooney, oh, I God. mean, I mean, oh, oh, brother, where <laughs> art thou, Willie? And I did like that movie. Fantastic Mr. Fox. And I don't like movies. My oh. children and I have seen Fantastic Mr. Fox more than any other movie in the history of mankind. So I cannot diss George Clooney uh, if I actually want to ever watch but that with my kids again. This but, wasn't George Clooney. But, but, well, th- what do you mean? 
It that, just wasn't. Come on. What? Well, who do you think it was? <laughs> Matt Damon. On. It was not Matt Damon. Who do you think it was? It wasn't Julia Roberts either. Who do you think it was? Um, you can say the name. You uh, won't melt. It's not Voldemort. <laughs> Did, are you saying you think Barack Obama put him up to this? I I think that Barack Obama has a lot of influence, and I I think that oh. there's uh, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. There's a lot there, and Willie. I'll, I'll and, tell you, there are two and, and, people and, in this picture, and oh. one has had a presidency that was absolutely, uh, uh, undeniably okay. historic. Yeah. Well, I think you have two people that had. Mm-hmm. Extraordinarily oh, historic. Oh, I'm sorry. Presidents. Historic in terms of uh, legislative accomplishments. Right. Well, well, like you say, and, and they're both historic. And they're both historic. And Barack Obama, for sure. Affordable Care Act, George. I mean, not George Clooney. You know, he probably said it too, Willie. But Joe Biden actually whispered that that was a big deal. Effing deal. <laughs> uh, so. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's <sighs> this question hangs over. All conversations, Willie, not not just here, <laughs> Willie. but with senators and everybody else about those of us who have spent a lot of time talking to President Biden, who know President Biden, were stunned by what we saw a couple Thursdays ago. Okay, so I only have one question for everybody that, and that, and 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 um, usually, usually I don't say this to my boys, but my boys. Uh, uh, conjure up Barack Obama a lot. So my question to you is this. If he is so much in charge, why doesn't he just remove him? Nobody said he was in charge. Uh, well, I said I said he's passing the message. Well, yeah. Uh, he's a he's a uh, he's just like Biden. He got controllers just like everybody else up there. That's what I've always thought. You know, because yep. I'm going I back mean, to the intelligence community. That's who that's I think how you kick that's how you kick a home. I mean well, I have been consistent in my message. I don't know how it's going to happen. He ain't got no power, man. I mean, there's a whole lot of skeletons. You know, I'll tell you what, man. You've heard of Chanel Rion on OANN? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a really good journalist. Yeah, she had George Santos on. I saw a video right before the show. Just oh. a, like a short three minute video. Santos Uh-oh. calling out all the homos in Congress. <laughs> he said it's full of homos. These people were so. He said I came out. He said I came out and I told you who I was. Right. I didn't lie to you. I told you I was gay. I am gay. And then he said, but these homos in there. And he started laughing. I mean, he didn't name any names. He said I'm not. I'm not in the business of outing anybody. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of undercover homos in the Republican I Party. I bet it is. I bet it is. And you can tell them. Yeah, you can believe me. Believe well, me, you he- really can tell them. I and mean, some the, of them might be, you know, but the one that wanted to start the fight with uh, Matt <laughs> Gates, <laughs> yeah, little Marco. You remember when he was? Remember during the, the primaries, we were talking about bubbles or something like that <laughs> with Marco. <laughs> and you, you know, you know Marco's. You know he's floating because what dude brings up another dude's junk on the in the debate? Yeah, yeah. That was a gay move. That was a gay movie. What were you saying there, Jason? I was just going to say, I've been consistent. Joe Biden won't be the nominee, and it is going to be entertaining as hell to see how they get rid of him. Because it's clear there are powerful people behind <laughs> the scenes that want him gone. <laughs> oh, he's and going to Tainted out from sauce. He's going. <laughs> right. I, he's he's going to fall up some stairs. <laughs> He's going to fall off the stairs. He's going to take a trip in a convertible in Texas. He's going to, you know, it, it's. And he's going to hold out. on, too. He's going to hold on. Right. <laughs> if you look at this, this, this is broader than what it appears to be. The reason the intelligence community is pushing to get rid of him is because they know that if he runs, they lose. And they're going to prison if he loses. They got a personal stake in this when they're getting ready. Somebody's getting whacked. Yes. Somebody's going to commit suicide with two shotgun shells in the back yeah. of their head. Somebody's, <laughs> somebody's getting whacked. You know, when there's this much at stake. Yeah. Right. They might not win. We might prevail, but somebody's getting whacked. Right. You know, um, there was a Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, 
I don't know whether y'all heard this story or not, but um, we keep hearing how bad TikTok is and, and different things like that, even though both presidents have an account on there. But, um, well, you know what? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do this. Uh, Valley, Great Valley, Great Valley Middle School. Have you heard of that in mm-hmm. Chester? That's all about Philly. Okay, the students uh, created 22 fake accounts uh, using their teachers' names on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds and, like fun. <laughs> Um, fictitious accounts, school officials, um, they, they use it for racial stuff. Uh, they, <laughs> the effective teachers, uh, receive support from the district through individual meetings, addressing their concerns and counsel. I guess they needed counseling services too. Um, let's see, uh, let's see. Discriminated, discriminatory memes, false allegations of <laughs> inappropriate relationships. Kids are uh, ruthless, man. They're ruthless. <laughs> put, me, put me on detention. Go ahead. I was going to say, you can get free apps. Get free apps. You can record one lecture, and then you can plug in the AI, and you can have it say anything it wants uh, in their voice. You know what? I was thinking about that this morning because I was listening to a radio station uh, that I usually listen to in the morning, and all these stars like, "Hi, right, my name is Janet. Right, my name is Janet Jackson, and you need to listen to such and such. My name is uh, such and such." I'm like, you know what? I ought to do the same thing. I go, right. I, I go get certain people and get their voices on. You're listening to the Wayne Dupree show. You did, you did that one time. I did, didn't I? I right. right. Sean, Sean Hannity's Hannity, yeah. voice is so clear, it sounds like Sean Hannity, period. Uh, but can man. you imagine if you were a kid and you just had a little bit of technological stuff? And I was a troublemaker as a youth. I would be so recording all those teachers. <laughs> and I would be, <laughs> I'd be those kids, man. We're, we're, we're a month away, two, six months away from not being able to believe anything. Right? That is true. That is true. Um, and now, and, 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 you know, my son, my son, uh, usually updates me with a lot of the AI stuff that's going on, even though I know a whole lot of the AI stuff that's going on, uh, because I also keep up with this stuff too, but man, I'm like, now you can come up with, um, certain, I put in because everybody's redoing movies all the time. I put in, give me a movie script. Oh, no, give me a, a movie synopsis that has never ever been done before. And it took like maybe 30 seconds, all of a sudden it starts spitting out. I started reading, it was like, man, I ain't never heard of this before. I ain't never heard of anything like that before. And I was like, I, I in a in a land in a day of everybody repeating stuff, you can start coming up with new new movie ideas ain't work but either way um yeah these these voices okay so um uh, what you were talking about earlier carpet baggers that's the word that's the word that is the word carpet baggers you know uh with the with the vice presidential thing coming up um, next week. Again, I say probably the easiest way to find out who is going to be the vice presidential nominee is you find out their schedule after the convention. Um, If they're going to be in the same place as Donald Trump, because you know, everybody, all the, (laughs) because some of the losers are going to be angry that they didn't get picked. So they ain't going to go anywhere. Uh, but then some might still go because they want a place in the cabinet. So, you know, that might uh, put a little chink in my in my prediction. But whoever is going to be the VP is going to be traveling with Donald Trump on Saturday and Sunday. 
that's the person that is going to, yeah, that's the person who's going to be VP. Uh, I was listening to someone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got a little breakdown of that, too. Somebody was like, uh, the reason why it won't be J.D. Vance is because J.D. Vance's um, beard. Yeah, and Trump, Trump came out. They asked Donald Trump about that. And he said, yeah, yeah doesn't he look like a young Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, really. <laughs> he doesn't like facial hair, but his sons no. both have it. Yeah, they do, don't they? But that's family, though. That's, yeah. And and um, Baron looks just like his dad when his dad was young, though. I mean, I, I look at both of those pictures, you know. I don't know. He, he 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 might be a New York. Well, he might be a Florida senator. Oh, and I do have to correct something, too. Uh, who's uh, the governor, of Florida? DeSantis looks like he is going to speak. At the RNC, I heard, I heard that too last night. Yeah that that happened right at right right after right after the show. I was getting ready to do a clip. I was like, wait a minute, oh, it just changed. Delete. I was like, delete. <laughs> Check this out. There's too much funeral music going on here. Uh, who's going to be vice president on the Republican ticket? Uh, I went through them all. You know, I've watched Trump for 30 years, especially in his business. Who he hires? The young hotshot never gets the top job. Mm -hmm. So JD Vance also. He doesn't hire guys with beards. <laughs> well, he, he was very close to George Steinman, who had the same rule, no facial hair. Oh, wow. Uh, Doug Burgum. Trump He's just on tonight. Yeah, Trump always likes the distinguished-looking, older executive. He fits the profile. That's who Trump always had at the Trump Organization. It's so one problem is uh, that strict ban on abortion in Burgum's state. Mm -hmm. not Burgum's fault, mm -hmm. but that brings the issue back up too much. I think Ben Carson... Ben Carson, interesting. Think about this. Uh, African American helps. He's from Michigan. That could help. He's got the greatest temperament of any politician. And think about Joe Biden in his condition running against a brain surgeon. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, up very that was very good. I'm all flat out of time. Uh, Five seconds, Joe oh. Concha, Vice President. Uh, Marco Rubio, I just love the fact that we turned this into The Apprentice where Trump is stretching it out to the very, very <laughs> well, end. Of course and at the end, doing. instead of getting a rose, you get a red MAGA hat. <laughs> <laughs> so like a that well. also. Five seconds, Vice President. Nobody knows but Donald Trump, and I'm not sure if he's sure of it yet, but in all seriousness, nobody knows. I love that Ben Carson is a real brain surgeon. He can make a real cutting-edge analysis. Well, yeah. ha, 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 ha. Joe Concha, Mark Simone, and Dave <laughs> Webb. Terrific stuff. Coming up next, the aforementioned Senator Marco Rubio, who was a leading... I didn't think Webb was still around. That's the first time I've seen him in years. Right. Yeah. Hey, I got something for you. You're listening to the Wayne Dupree Show on RVM News. Make sure you share Wayne, Hutch, and Jason because the nation needs to hear these patriot voices. <laughs> A Sean Hannity endorsement. What more do we need? To the moon. <laughs> Put in there Douglas MacArthur. Oh, man. Uh, or, or John F. Kennedy. We could have endorsements oh, from everybody. I know, I know, I know. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's face it. The current geopolitical situation isn't great. And under this administration, the economy hasn't exactly inspired confidence. As a result, Americans like you are concerned about their retirement savings and for good reason. But there's good news. Gold has held its value since the dawn of mankind and has been mentioned in every book of the Bible. As a faith-driven precious metals company, Genesis Gold Group helps Americans protect their life savings from the threats facing our nation. And here's what I love about them. They don't do the gimmicks like the gold companies and insult your intelligence, the big gold companies, and insult your intelligence with absurd claims of $10,000 or whatever in free silver. Instead, they actually want customers to be fully aware of all options, not just the ones that benefit the seller, and they educate you all along the way. Get your free definitive gold guide to get started and learn more about investing in gold and protecting your retirement from uncertain times. Visit treasureandtrust.com now. Fill out the basic contact form and a member of the team will be in touch. Again, that's treasureandtrust.com. And that's the perforated silver that fits right in your wallet. Yep. 
And not only do we have Sean Hannity. You're listening to the Wayne Dupree Show on RVM News. Make sure you share Wayne, Hutch, and Jason because the nation needs to hear these patriot voices. Thank you, Mr. Levin. Um, (laughs) (laughs) We are going to live in such a great timeline, guys. Thank God we didn't die already. Like, I just want to see this. Put in Rick James. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. And to the woman behind the back, (laughs) I'm Rick (laughs) James. Oh man. Um, Well, yeah, too. Uh, Let me let me also tell you about uh, Red Beach Nation too, because um, they got cool stuff. Yeah, they do. Have you been to their website? Yeah. (coughs) Yeah. Yeah, you know, I like too that it's uh, kind of timeless stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for real, this today today is uh, today is one of those days where you look and you say, "Okay, I got this to do, and I got that to do, and I got that to do." So, um, for those that are watching the show, check out check us out. On locals too. Don't forget to check out uh, what what we're doing over there because um, there's a whole lot of there's articles over there. There's uh, there's video. You can even watch us live. To tell you the truth, you can watch us live on locals too. So um, yeah. Okay. Um, what are y'all looking at going into the weekend? Oh, we got some good news finally from Gen Z. From the younger folks, um, these uh, people, people used to mock them about Gen Z being the most conservative group of young people since Reagan. Mm. But think about this. They grew up on the Internet and were far less propagandized by the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. Now the data is proving it from Newsweek. Young people are flocking to the Republican Party. The National Public Opinion Reference Survey published by Pew Research on Tuesday and reveals something huge. Republicans are leading plus one with voters under 30, a first in the history of this poll. Even more incredible, respondents under 26 that are registered to vote are R plus 30. That's a good thing for the future. Well, and it's funny because if you look at the cycle of time, when things get rough, everybody becomes conservative. Everybody Mm -hmm. becomes a producer because there's a shortage. I mean, we talked talked yesterday about food like when people are hungry it's really easy to look out for yourself first and then when you produce all this excess that's when all these leftist ideas creep in that's why leftists never built anything and can't sustain anything because their policies collapse on themselves because you can only have a society or a civilization where so many people aren't producing and now jen and we've talked about how we've ruined things for these kids but if you're somebody born, I mean, I got kids that are growing up in their twenties now and houses are unaffordable. You can't make enough money. You can't afford your bills. It's we've screwed them. And they see all these people coming over the border, getting more free stuff. And they're like, God, we we can't even afford our, our citizens or supporting our citizens. Why are we bringing in all these people? So you, I I think you're poised for a big conservative. I do too. I got, I got some personal things I want to share with you guys. Um, my grandson, I think he's in about sixth grade. He's still in grade school. He's sharp, but he's still in grade school. He texted me the other day from his mom's phone. He said, Hey, this is Elliot. Um, can you show me where you guys interviewed Donald Trump? And I had to scroll back through all those shows to find it. Mm -hmm. And I found the link and sent it to him. Sixth grade. Nice. Nice. Well, and Donald Trump is somebody kids in this country or people in this country aspired to be like not that he was perfect or he was a role model but he was somebody and yeah you know his dad gave him some money but he's made some of himself he's worked hard he's had failures he's had successes i I mean take out the last political stuff in the last 10 years he is a true american success story every american should strive to to do that take the risk he could be a role model he doesn't drink he doesn't smoke all right he was a bad world-class athlete he almost went to the major league baseball i don't know if you guys knew that 
Yeah, oh yeah. When he got out of New York Military Academy, he could have went and played baseball if he wanted to. Right. But I mean, people highlight, you know, whether he was a womanizer or some of the language he uses and that kind of stuff. But all in all, if you raised your kids to have the business success Donald Trump has, like you'd be really happy. You know, um, you know, I, you know, we we have um certain <laughs> we have certain people that do come out and uh, come out of show, uh, even from Fox When I'm not with my Fox and Friends family in the mornings, I'm thinking about getting ready to watch the Wayne Dupree show on RVM News. Wayne, Hutch, and Jason are modern-day masterpieces of information and patriotism. <laughs> Tune in and share. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Really appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I got it good, man. I, I'm serious. I got it good. And 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 the next one, uh, the next one you're gonna love because you know the election is coming up. You know, and having having somebody from Florida. We're going to win big in November, and you're doing yourself a service by listening to the Wayne Dupree show on RVM News. I am happy to call Wayne Hutch. And Jason, friends of mine, tune in and share their award-winning show. <laughs> you know, Wayne, Wayne, how are you doing this? Because I'm into this stuff, man. I, I mean, <laughs> you know. And not to sound bad, but that isn't that complicated to do. You know no. what I mean? A lot of the no, tools are not. created. It's, uh, it's everywhere. AI is everywhere. You can get transcripts, podcasts, and, and you can tell that this generation can't spell because when you see the subtitles that are generated by AI, you'll see a word come out and it's totally not the right word, but it right. sounds like it. Right. You know, you know what you were talking about, Jason, about producing and things like that. I'm in a unique position where I live to see this, the effects of this. And one of the effects is terrible. Um, basically the industrial and even a financial uh, America started here. A lot of it. And yep. a lot of the big banks started here, Mellon Bank and, and a whole bunch of different people that you've heard of um, came through the steel industry and the oil industry. And they worked their butts off and, and, you know, amassed fortunes. Three, four, five generations later, those are the communists, the ones that never had to work a day in their life. Right. They're the Antifa people. Right. That's the, that's the problem with giving money to your kids. Well, and that's the thing is people who never had to earn for things, they have no problem giving stuff away or giving other people stuff away. Exactly. That's why every time somebody's like, oh, we need to raise taxes, a billionaire. My favorite is billionaires need to pay their fair share. And, and, and I got to say, that is the biggest bunch of crap I've ever heard. Millionaires and billionaires. Like they should pay a fair tax rate, but they shouldn't pay any higher rate than I do. They should pay the same as the poorest person in the country. Right. And we should all aspire to build our wealth or build our business or build our assets. And we should be able to give that wealth that we created to our children tax free, in my opinion, because that creates an investment for me to build something that creates a reason for me to have kids, to have somebody to pass it down to. And now they, they've even taken that away where you know, if, if you go to leave money to your kids, you just get throttled with taxes and it shouldn't be like that. No, and you man, know what? It's the biggest, biggest check I ever wrote in my life was when my mom's estate uh, got taxed. Yeah, um, it's insane. And and no offense, your mom worked really hard her whole yeah. life to build an estate to have something to give you. And that and she already paid tax on that money. Well, mom so, was taxed. It was tax deferred. Right. But, but, but you know what I'm saying? Big, it was like, still too much money, too much of a percentage, though. Yeah, it, it's crazy. And if you want Americans to build things for the future, you've got to have an incentive. And if my incentive is oh, I can give more to the government versus giving it to my family, and we all start out dirt poor, and we've had to make something of ourselves. So it's not like we're I started out rich. Elitist. I lost everything. Right. <laughs> Just look on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, President Trump, uh, uh, 
was on was on Truth Show was on Truth Social. He called out George Clooney. Did y'all get to see that? Oh yeah, he's Is been on fire movie? on Truth Social. Yeah. So now, fake movie actor George Clooney, who never came close to making a great movie is getting into the act. He's turned on Crooked Joe like the rats they both are. What does Clooney know about anything? He uses the Democrat talking point that Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States, has saved our democracy. No, Crooked Joe was the one who weaponized law enforcement against his political opponent, who created the most devastating inflation in the history of our country, who embarrassed our nation in Afghanistan and whose crazy open border policy has allowed millions of people to illegally pour into our country, many from prisons and mental institutions. Crooked Joe Biden didn't save our democracy. He brought our democracy to its knees. Clooney should get out of politics and go back to television. Movies never really worked for him. <laughs> Those were Donald Trump's words, by the way. I, I I just copied it and put it in there, but um, I haven't been using this like I should, I guess, because <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> right? I, I didn't want to get in trouble. You're like, wait a minute, I didn't do that. So, um, yeah, I I, I mean, honestly, I think. Usually during the day of the convention, there's really much, it's really much about nothing. You're going to have people up there giving speeches and stuff and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, mo most of your stuff starts around seven o'clock at night. Uh, if you watch the house cards or anything like that, you know that it's certain things happen at night. But, um, uh, again, Biden is supposed to be coming out next month and uh, no, next week with some ra uh, racial. Uh... Did you see Charles? You see Charles Payne? No, On that. Oh, you had you got to see that. That was that was funny. He talked about Biden. He said, he said Biden Biden went to the black church. And he was afraid. He was scared everybody. It was it, it cracked me up. I didn't know Charles Payne was that funny. Yeah, I saw that. Well, I mean, I didn't see what you were talking about, but I saw saw what you uh yeah. Um Red Beach Nation. Red Beach Nation, we were talking about that earlier, but that provides conservative apparel um and beachwear for freedom loving Americans. Whether you live at the beach or traveling to one or just want to Imagine yourself there. Red Beach's comfy patriotic apparel is sure to lift your spirits. Founded by a former counterterrorism officer and war veteran of both the Afghanistan and Iraq wars, Red, Red Beach Nation is committed to upholding the American values and principles that we all hold so dear. And the best part, the merchandise is not even going to get you into a fight or shut it down as you go about your day. Red Beach Nation is also pure Americana. So it behooves you. Wait, hold on. Wrong, <laughs> wrong one. Uh, not shirts that are designed to spark outrage. So uh, it, so come live the sand, surf, and freedom lifestyle with us. Head on over to redbeachstation.com and use the pro promo code Wayne to save 10% off your order. Again, it behooves you to visit redbeachnation.com and use promo code Wayne to save 10% off of your order. Um, I think I think um, for those that are watching the show today, you're probably saying, okay, what is going on with the show? Well, certain things uh, we're only going to do about an hour today. Uh, real world real world situations have come up. And things have to be taken care of. Uh, so we're uh, going to end around 1 o'clock today. And that's why it seems like I'm so scattered because a lot of things are going in and out of my head about certain things that I have to take care of. But, um, you know, we did we did want to come on and set up the, uh, set up the, the, the platform for next week because, again, the, the big thing is the VP. 
And most people out there are saying uh, Ben Carson. Most people are saying Ben Carson. Uh, I have been against Ben Carson and uh, being VP uh, because I I just think that the person has to needs to be a bulldog. But and 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 if you also know your president, and I'm not saying that I know him like that. And I'm not in his brain. I'm not trying to interpret anything. Or I'm just going on what I've seen before. He usually doesn't have someone that is going to be a bigger name than him beside him. Because of everything that he talks about, you know, having the biggest this and the biggest that and, and you know, the biggest arena and the biggest numbers and the biggest pole numbers and stuff like that. He's not going to have anybody that is going to outshine him. He's not. He's not going to do it. Um, he's too. Uh, he's too proud for that. Uh, have y'all noticed? And I'm not telling him to to say anything about it. But have y'all noticed? And let's not go past this. Have y'all noticed he hasn't said anything about uh, the the sh- shot thing? About how he was responsible for it and smart man. He hasn't said yeah. anything. Yeah. He's been real quiet on that one. Yeah, there's no upside politically in that. And I mean, it's just a can of worms. Yeah. And I got to say, we were critical of different things he did during the pandemic. But overall, I mean, as more and more of the story comes out, how it came out, what happened, all the forces, big pharma jumping in. I mean, it is it's a perfect witches brew of you got communist china involved you got big pharma money involved look at all the money laundering that's coming out too from all the covid funds that got pushed out the did, whole thing was a did you also did you also see the the soccer team going to the sands yesterday i heard about it i saw that i was like that reminded me of indiana basketball a couple of years ago when it, when the nba players went to the sands and stuff but these soccer fans went and and started whooping tail Oh yeah, I I was like, oh my god, that that's dangerous for the soccer players because they're outnumbered, you know. Oh well, Glad it took me it took me a while, but Biden ran in the 1988 primary. Yeah, yeah, I said that. Yeah, who did he run against in '88? Dukakis. Okay, Dukakis, Jesse Jackson, and Al Gore, and Gary Hart beat Dukakis. But didn't he run earlier in the '80s though? I'm looking. <laughs> I think he yeah, ran I remember. 84 and then yeah. was this bad one where he, like, I, I think 84, if I remember right, was uh, he just kind of stuck his toe in the water and then dropped out right away. That was Mondale. 84. Yeah. And Jackson again and Gary Hart again. In 84? Yeah. So he ran in 84 and 88. I don't see Biden on the list. Where? I mean, of eighty four, he's an eighty eight. Okay, okay. Well, I'm like, well, an exploratory committee. It must have been eighty then. Something. It must have been eighty because um, maybe he skipped eighty four because it, everything was still new about him um, uh, stealing stuff. But I thought it was. I thought he did it two times. He I, he did do it two times, yeah. but I think I think like Jason said, one of them was just like five minutes. Right. He was in and out. Kind of like Kamala Harris's 2020 campaign. Yeah, exactly. Although she ran for a bit. She raised some money. And, and that weeks, almost happened to Biden, too. That almost happened to Biden, too. Right. Until they, until they intervened. Clyburn said, <laughs> here's our pick. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, hey, are yeah. we going to put our guesses in for who we think the VP will be? Yeah. Um, yeah, mark it down. I'm ready. Touch. J.D. Vance. Vance. Okay. I'll go, and I don't know if this is allowed. We'll have to have a rules check. But if you take the top five or six, so Vance, Vivek, Tulsi, all those guys, Ben Carson, and then you have the field. So somebody that's not on that list, I'll take the field. I'll no, unexpected. No, 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 no. That's too broad. Okay. No, Jason. No, Jason. Give me a name. 
Ah, a name. Yeah. I, I, I'm going with uh, Devin Nunez. Okay. I said that. Right. Okay. Well, guess what? I'm going with Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi? Yep. Don't go with Tulsi. I don't think I'd mind that. I'd have I to know. Look. I'd have to look into it. No, we wouldn't more. mind it, Hutch. I mean, that's something we were talking about years I mean, ago. I'd, I'd have to look at them a little deeper in her politics. I haven't really gone past they her. Seem right. I mean, they seem she, right. She I mean, I, I will hmm? say I follow Tulsi and I like Tulsi. I like kind of those political outsiders. And she grew up with pretty traditional Democrat talking points. And as she gets older, she's becoming more and more conservative. And she's which not, is, I think is an arc. Like if people looked at our political beliefs, 20 it happened years to ago, me. Right. And, and so that's a criticism of her is that they'll go back and say, Oh, she was for this or that. Exactly. 120 exactly. years ago. Yeah. I, I think, but the thing I like, time about enough. she's time enough and she's, lying enough right. to push back on the media too. And I think the thing I like about Tulsi, and it's kind of point one of do I want to support this politician is do I think she's owned by these horrible people and dark right, interests? Right, right, right. And I don't think Tulsi is. I don't think so oh. either because she would still be in there. She left. Right. Okay. She le As a matter of fact, she, she was part of the big committee um, uh, Bernie's Bernie committee or something. She was she was up there and she walked away. Right. You and, know. And I always have a soft spot for those people in politics because I think everybody that gets into it gets bought out by some corporation or some something. And I don't think Tulsi did. I think she had the opportunity to take the money and she didn't. So <laughs> I don't like everything she supports. She there's plenty of things you can be critical about her values or things that she supported previously and oh, I changed my opinion or mm -hmm. whatnot. But, you know, I mean, some of the folks, you know, you, who, Marco Rubio, that guy is owned 12 ways from Sunday. There's no way I'd want Marco Rubio. No. I'd rather have Tulsi. I don't, I don't think, I don't think Trump even considered him. You don't. Mm. I mean, people say he did, but they can say whatever yeah. they want. Right. Um, and Tulsi's actually not just a veteran. She still serves, if I remember she's right. She's a veteran. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. And she's against the woke stuff in the military. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's some things to like about Tulsi. She's fine, too. Listen, um, <laughs> well, she is. Um, God, I can stand looking at Tulsi videos. For I mean, when she surfs, she surfs. Listen, um, I'll go half and I'll, I'll meet you halfway with the generic thing hutch who's your top three my second one would be michael flynn right there down. um third um third somebody we've never heard of before that isn't on any of these lists because i don't think he's going to pick any of those other people ben carson's a no win he's a great man love the guy he's not going to be president in 2028 they'll 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 drown him it's got to hey, be somebody. Uh, I'll give you a third one. Okay. Lieutenant Governor uh, from down in South North Carolina, Mark Robertson. R Robinson. Ooh. Really? I'd love to see him in there. Okay. Our second um, amendment is under threat. I'd love to see him in there. Jason, put down a, a solid no was Ben Carson for Hutch. Mm -hmm. He gave you his top three and then gave you a solid no. Uh, but I'm not saying who. Okay, see, I blew that. I'm going who I want. Right. Who Go, do you think he's going to pick is the question. Exactly, right, right, right. I hope he doesn't pick Ben Carson. I, I don't think he will. <laughs> I don't think he will. I okay, so, he, he okay knows, so your he, first your first is what again? J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance, okay. Michael Flynn, and Mark Roberts. Robinson. Robinson or Robinson, yeah, sorry. And a solid no for Ben Carson. Right. Oh. Okay. Your top pick was Devin Nunez, right? Um, yeah, and it's really it a field. It's kind of that unnamed, but Devin Nunez. Okay. He supported him in Russiagate. He worked okay. for him with Truth Social. They travel around a lot together. Okay. I like that. I think my second would actually be Ben Carson. 
okay. if I'm picking who he would pick. Not saying okay. I want him to, but that's yeah. saying who I think he I think he is uh one of the safe picks, somebody Trump would trust. Well, he's safe. Um, right. You know, all that kind of stuff. And I, I don't think that would necessarily be be the one that, that we would pick. And third, I'm gonna go Vivek. And I think Vivek would be the guy that um you know, complete wild card, somebody that we throw in there. And if we're picking a no, Who's I'm going no? no for Rubio. Okay. All right. Um, my my shock pick, and I came out of nowhere with that one, was Tulsi Gabbard. Yep. Um, I've been reading some things lately. So Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, number two would be, uh, I'm going with my Devin Nunez. Yeah, good one. Number two. Uh, number three, I'm going with Doug Burgum from what I've been reading. And number four, solid no, is Ben Carson. Oh, this will be exciting. Okay. So, and I just, I, I know how we can, or see, it starts on Monday, right? It starts on Monday. The Darn she? Yeah, they're talking. He could announce it as soon as this weekend. We yeah, I'm, he's gonna have to. But you know why? Because you get to see who speaks on what night, <laughs> and the and the VP speaks on Wednesday night, and the president yep. speaks on Thursday night. So the 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 VP is if if Vance, if Carson, if uh, Telsey, if any any one of those is speaking on Monday and Tuesday, they ain't the VP. They in the VP. Now, Trump could get all of us, he's watching this, and put all of them on Wednesday night. He'll screw everything up. <laughs> <laughs> He'll screw everything up. Uh, it's funny that nobody said, um, uh, what's the other guy in Florida? Donald's. No way. None of None of us said Donald's. That's because of the Donald's. delegates. I mean, I'd like to see him, but he's well, not. Well, Rubio's the same thing. He's not going to get picked either. Right, right. I, I was going to say, if we're making our list of who we want him to pick, I mean, my list would be completely different. It would be Byron Donalds. It would be Michael Flynn. It would be like, I could totally make a list of people that I would love to see. Okay. All right. So our list is who we think Donald Trump is going to pick. Not who we think. I'll tell you what would be, be nice to see. Gen General Flynn get selected as a sec as a, um, chief of staff. No, the uh, Defense Department. Yep. To go out and clean all those people out that torched him. Oh, God, can you imagine Flynn after what they did to him? Secretary of Defense. Speaking of that, <coughs> Pat, it looks like Paxton is um, facing impeachment again. <laughs> yep. Such a fraud. The Republican Party is such a fraud. At least finally people are seeing it. Mm -hmm. Looks like, yeah. I, I was going to say Trump could have fun. I mean, there there's some people like Flynn. I love Michael Flynn. I think he would be a great addition to the administration. I don't think politically he could pick Flynn for VP because that would fall into all sorts of other narratives and it, it would make it. And Trump's got to get elected. And I would be shocked if he doesn't have Flynn be part of the administration. And I want to see that more, almost as much as Trump is president. Me too. Because because if you dig into the story, I mean, FlynnMovie.com, I think, is the website, where if you watch what they did to him and his family, it is awful. Yeah. Well, here we go. Um, short, shortened show today. We want you to um, experience. I don't know when it's supposed to be hot this weekend or what, but um, if you have a beach, find it. If you have a park, visit it. If you have uh, some um, some some uh, movies that you want to check out, watch them. But whatever you do, take a day or two away from politics to rejuvenate your mind. Get yourself back. Get yourself back, okay? Uh, and because that's that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna get be getting ourselves back. Somebody told <laughs> one of our uh, uh, watchers said, "Y'all are off more no." Y'all are y'all have the Congress schedule because you know taking a couple days off here. To, no, it's not that. It's just 
just can't do it every day. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, just can't do it every day of every week. That's why we take Fridays off. Uh, and then we find it. Now, if there's something that's happening, some major event, you know, I'll, which is which hasn't happened, but it used to. We used to pop on. Hey, yo, man, I'm going live. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll be there. I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we. I mean, is I'm glad. I'm glad that we've been able to do this for uh, 12 years. And uh, you know, if things if things shut down, things shut down. But you know, that's that's um we hope we hope that we've been able to do a whole lot of great things for you and uh um, yeah just keep praying for us keep praying for the show and keep praying for the country jason last thoughts uh well hey in the political sphere uh, we already touched on it but tonight big boy press conference six o'clock i'm probably not going to watch it live i'll probably watch it tomorrow morning um and then uh, Trump VP pick is going to be coming out this weekend uh, because Monday they got to kind of know going into the convention. So so that's huge. And and kind of on Wayne's, uh, you know, personal note, like it's great being on the show. We appreciate your guys support. And uh, yeah, we, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So make sure you like comment, share. And then for the weekend, find something to do that unplugs you from this stuff. And it's funny, my wife and I, we joke, but we started playing Pokemon go again, which we played a few years ago and you walk around and you catch stupid Pokemons on your phone. But we have found like five different parks we've never been to. We've started taking walks along the river. It's just find whatever thing is going to get you out and about and just not being in this doom circle that we, we have right now in our political sphere, you'll feel better for it. And it's, uh, it's depressing when you, when you, once you, we, we've said this before, once you see the strings, you can't unsee them. Right. Uh, for instance, they're making this big deal that the House passed the SAVE Act. All right. The say that's illegal aliens being able to vote in federal elections, a law against that. And the House passed it and it's going to die in the Senate. So right. just, just understand that it's Mitch McConnell's fault that that bill's going to pass because of the sniping that guy did to our yeah. Senate candidates before. Uh, yeah. They took one out of Pennsylvania that was right with Kathy Barnett. They, they aced her. They did it across other states in Arizona and other places. That's on Mitch McConnell and the Republican Party. And yeah. aside from that, I think I'm going fishing this weekend. Go fishing. <laughs> Have you ever had red snapper before? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Is it good? It's delicious. What is it? I mean, what is it just taste like fish or is there a special taste to it? No, it tastes like it. It's it's almost like it, it doesn't have the consistency of fish as much. It it is. I mean, it's white. But it, you can chew it a little bit. It's good. Yeah, it's okay. kind of a meteor fish. I yeah. haven't had it for years. Yeah. But yeah. Um, there's a pet. Have y'all had Chilean sea bass before? No. Okay. Uh, Heard of because, it. Yeah, because I've had Chilean sea bass before, and it had almost a consistency of chicken. If you get the snapper, you'll like it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kind of All expensive. Right. We had a, I was in a warrant officer. That's why I haven't got it yet. Warrant officer school down in uh, Alabama. And we it was five weeks long. And some guys got together on one of the weekends and went to, to Georgia to, uh, I forget the name of the place. It's on the beach, Panama City. And they mm -hmm. went on a, uh, a fishing thing. And they brought back like 300 pounds of snapper. And they sent most of it to their homes. But they had this big cookout uh, with the snapper. Man, it's the only time I ever had it. It was delicious. No. They grilled it. Yeah. 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 That's how that's how I've been seeing it. And the grilled. dudes from Texas smoked the brisket. It was great. Mm, oh. <laughs> the chat's just going off on fish recommendations. <laughs> I love our yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. Y'all have I wish the audience too can see like have to try the chat. Because um, you have everybody on all these different platforms weighing in on different things. Like when we <laughs> asked earlier about carpet bagging, I think it was Candace is like, Oh, that's called carpet bagging. And, and then yeah, I got it from her. Right, yeah, it's we got a great audience. It's fun. Yeah, that if you ever get a chance to try Chilean sea bass, you need to try it because we we should do a food segment. Yeah, like fifteen look, minutes or something. Look, the sea bass is good. 
But it's catfish, amazing. catfish is good too, as long as it's not eaten in pl- it's not in polluted waters. You got to be careful with catfish. I, I tried to fry it, but that skin sticks stays no, you on. Gotta, what you do is you nail it to a board, and then you cut across the skin by the head, and you get a pair of pliers and you peel the skin right off. What? Really? Anytime you prepare your food with pliers, I'm in. <laughs> I am so in. I got to say, too, we've started eating a lot of tilapia. I It's remarkable how good and easy of a meal that is, and it's pretty healthy for you. you don't I like don't it. eat that. Uh, no, me either. I, I, I don't eat a fish. I used to. I, can't see it. I don't know. I, don't I, went, know. <laughs> I heard that there, there's some things yeah, going on with that one. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I thought we were researching a, little, researching a little bit. Oh, God dang it. <laughs> we used to eat it all the time, man. I, man, tilapia, but no man, I heard oh, this. No. The, na- the nasty fish. Somebody's raining on my tilapia parade. I never saw a tilapia swimming. Oh, <laughs> that's like scrod. There's no such <laughs> thing as a scrod. Oh man, now I'm gonna have to go on the YouTube to see what tilapia. No, is. God dang. It was crazy too. It's like I used man, I used to put peppers and peppers and stuff in there and fry that tilapia up, and then all of a sudden the ex-wife came home. I thought she was becoming a little bit more religious than what kind. She was like, we can't eat tilapia anymore. Why? Because it's bottom. Uh, they're it's on the bottom of the ocean. Like catfish. That's what a catfish is too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't eat catfish either, but I mean, I, I tried, I tried to fry it one time and it turned out right. Catfish. You got to get from a catfish farm from a pond. That's just, that's all that's in there. And right. The bottom, and the bottom's clean because what they do is they suck the dirt into their mouth. And they find the food in it, and then they spit the dirt out. Oh. If you're in, a, if you're in an industrial area, they get all kind of heavy metals in them, and from stuff that's at the bottom of the river. Well, I watched one of those. I watched. <laughs> he was getting ready to say, "Yo, man, yeah, yeah, the salmon is good." I mean, um, uh, um, tilapia well, good. salmon is yeah. good. Well, Sam, salmon is really good. Uh, I've been eating the wild. Wild uh, wild salmon instead of the farm raised. I don't yep. mess with the farm raised too much anymore. Uh, because when I saw what happens in those nets and stuff, I saw the video. I was like, man, that, that water looks nasty. And it looks like they're feeding off of each other in there, too. So, But whitefish is good. Whitefish That's too fishy for me. Is it? Yeah. Whitefish? And too skinny man. to flays. And grouper? I've heard of grouper. I haven't had it. I haven't had that one. I like haddock. Tilapia's bait. <laughs> Man, tilapia. my tilapia just got whapped. <laughs> tilapia fate from China. Fate from China. Oh, you guys are killing me. You got to That's something though. Seriously, about seafood, you got to watch the source, right? They because they do yeah. some nasty stuff over in China. Yeah, like, they do. Like pouring ant- fifty-five gallon drums of antibiotics into the water so they don't all die and stuff like that. Oh, if you ever dig into fish farming, it's horrible. Like, you never want to eat a fish again. That's what lo- red lobster uses. Right. You see lobster, people that fish for lobster, they hate red lobster. Yep. Really? Why? Because they use fish farms, lobster farms. You know, it's controlled. It's not, they're not out in the ocean catching them. Okay. Yeah, and when you get in those fish farms, anytime you put a lot of fish in a small body of water, the waste products and... Everything gets out of control. That's what I was talking about with the with the farm salmon. I mean, it almost yeah, looked like that. it almost looked like the water in um, Louisiana is. I mean, it's so murky and stuff. But you seeing uh, pieces of salmon floating all the way up to the top. It's almost like they're eating each other type of stuff. You know, animals <laughs> will do that. I, I I had I raised chickens for a while, and I had this one brand in there that's it was the ones you're talking about. Wayne, the big ones at the breast and everything is so big. Yeah I, had, yeah, I had five or six of them, and the other chickens used to pick on them, and they'd walk by. One of them would walk by and peck them right in the side, and then another one would come by and peck them in the same spot, and they do that all day. I'd come home from work, and they had a big red hole in them in the side. I had to kill them. 
Yeah, Ooh. my stepson, he started raising chickens finally. I've been waiting for one of the kids to start raising chickens so he can get farm fresh eggs. And he just, he's working on his coop and he got his baby chickens. And when you research it, chickens are kind of a-holes. Like they are <laughs> not nice creatures. Mm -mm. They will peck each other. I mean, if you don't, if they get a little hungry, they're like, who's the weakest in the pen? Your wow. dinner. Wow. And all okay. animals are like that. Most of them. Right. So are humans. Yeah, that's true. So um, hopefully, hopefully we aren't eating each other you know, <laughs> a little bit later. All right. Well, that's, that's a little food segment for the weekend. Y'all get yourself some good fish or just go out and get a healthy steak. And um, you can't go wrong with a steak. Huh? I, Stay away from tilapia, we learned. Tell your wife. Tell your wife. You're like, honey, get rid of the, get rid of the package. We got to get rid of it. Mr. George. Mr. George. <laughs> Did they finish your, um, your, your uh, debt? Or? I actually, yesterday they finished putting the railing on. And it was funny how backlogged <laughs> they, like the laborers <laughs> are looking for work, but the suppliers are struggling they're not producing stuff so they don't because it's not moving so you know like, why don't it took two weeks to get so you know what you know why don't you they have cameras in the um parking lot at home depot now there <laughs> they don't let them pick up hector and victor and slap the old isn't that jason robinson from the wayne dupree show <laughs> right Zoom in. all right there we go all right y'all y'all have a great weekend uh hutch out jason out wayne out y'all Take care.